conceptual perspective. Talk about Dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable uh, day. I'm going to get right to it. Uh, I'm on my way to a meeting, so um, I don't have a whole lot of time, but this is going to be a start of a series, but we're going to talk about something that nobody wants to talk about. Uh, this isn't an entertainment. This isn't sensationalism. This isn't uh, celebrity gossip. This is one of the most intimate and most devastating realities in the black community. And you, as you saw, as you uh, went through the intro of this video, we are asking for support. We're asking for specifically, listen to me, donations. Um, when you've done the work, as long as I've done it, I've earned the right to ask, first of all when you've been as, as successful in the scope of what you have the capacity to do, you have a right to ask to expand that capacity when the, when the expansion is so necessary. And the things we're gonna talk about over the next few weeks are gonna highlight that. We're looking to raise $10,000. We were trying to do it last weekend, we raised $52. We're trying to raise $10,000 by the end of this weekend. And I'm gonna keep pushing, I'm gonna keep asking. Uh, again, Nobody owes me anything, but if we're really truly talking about building, this is a part of it, and there's no way around it. You don't get to wish and sit back and talk. You can't debate your way out of what we're in, and that's something that we are going to really truly have to learn, and I'm going to be on the challenging block, calling it out daily until we get it. We're going to have to pour into our communities. Here's something that we do consistent. This isn't the dark secret that I'm talking about. We're going to get to the dark secret because I see it and it's breaking my heart and I'm going to have to deal with the dark secret that nobody wants to talk about. But what I'm talking about now is how we sit up. Here's something we do. We used to be referred to, those of us who have found a way to, to navigate and maneuver and negotiate the labyrinthine corridors of white supremacy and racism and do pretty good for ourselves in whatever area what whatever uh industry whatever uh whatever what we tend to do for the most part and obviously there are exceptions we get the hell out the hood and we keep running some of us get the hell out the hood and start judging we, we, forgetting where we came from and forgetting the responsibility to reach back in and to pull others out. Most of us lose our patience because they don't get it as fast as we got it or we forgot how long it took us to get it and we don't take into consideration all of the different dynamics at play and so we push them away and we sit up and say you can't take them all no you can't take them all that's some of them that need to be put down honestly uh those that are wreaking havoc and destroying the communities and uh ravaging our children and our women absolutely need to be put down absolutely no questions 
But for those who can be redeemed, they need to be redeemed. We need them. But what we're going to have to do is sit up and go back. We're going to have to go back with our pocketbooks. We're going to have to go back with our energy, our efforts, our presence. We're going to have to go back with strategies. We're going to have to go back with 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 with, with a mindset and a, and, a, and a behavior that says we we see you, we feel you, we know what you're going through, and actually touch them. And it, it, I'm telling you what it feels like when you go there and you touch them. And there's so many people who are capable of facilitating and resourcing an expansion of this thing that just sit there. Absolutely unacceptable. Now, let's talk about the dark secrets and the skeletons in the black family closet. There are some people on my channel, specifically my Black Voice YouTube channel, I don't know if they're anywhere else on my social media, but I know that they're not gonna call them by names because this isn't about embarrassing anybody because I love and care for every last one of my black brothers and sisters until they prove to me they're not black brothers and sisters. I don't need you to agree with me. I don't need you to uh, be my greatest cheerleader. I don't might need my ego stroke. What I need are people who wanna learn, who wanna grow, who wanna be better. But there are some people on my channel who've really been hurt. Specifically talking about females here now, but I wanna tell you, I've got several black men that have been stomped in their marriages, did everything they could to try to make it work, to love on them, and they got stumped. So we're not going to pretend like it's only black men cutting up in marriages, it's only black men doing uh, things that are detrimental. But right now I want to talk about my sisters that are hurt right now because um, the way they come, everything is about the failure of the black man. Don't get me wrong, we've had our failures. But if I'm talking about protecting our kids, and your response is about one sentence that I make about the importance of us having families, and your whole take from that is, I'm never gonna get married, I'm never gonna teach my daughter uh, that and all that. That tells me that there's a pain there. And the pain is so deep that you're not gonna see it. All you see is your reality. So you're not seeing it from where I'm seeing it. I'm trained to see it from a non-biased perspective. And I believe 100% somebody hurt you. Maybe more than one person hurt you. Some people fail you. Probably the people who were meant to protect you. Oh, and here's the thing. She's not alone. That's the problem. She knows people who went through what she went through. It's easy for our women to draw the conclusion if they never escape the cocoon of their suffering. It's easy for them to draw a conclusion that every black man is an asshole. Every black man is a rapist. Every black man is a child molester. Every black man is abusive and violent towards women and children. Why? Because we tend to find the people who understand us, who hear us, who believe us. And a lot of times those are people who've been through what we've been through. So we hear the same story. We start to draw conclusions and we start to believe that the black man is the most evil thing on God's earth. And the truth of the matter is if we actually study, if we actually look, black men are the most involved in their children's lives, more than white men, more than Asian men, more than Arab men. This is scientific proof. This is studies being done, but it's never going to be shown to you because it's not, uh, it, it, it's not expedient to the narrative that they're trying to write about black men to keep the divisiveness between them and black women. Now, let me say this. With that being said, we still have a problem though. Because my studies tell me that on the conservative end, 40% of black women uh, were in some way sexually assaulted, molested, or raped before they were 18. Now on the liberal end of that, there are studies that say it's high 60%. That's a problem. Now, here's the thing. While black males are less likely to uh, report it, we still got a one in six to one in eight, depending on the study you're looking at, of black boys being molested. We, we, we talk about the horrific things that R. Kelly did, but we forget the fact that he was first a victim. And that the people he ended up targeting, the things that were uh, put out, were normally right around the age of his sister who molested him at the time she was molesting him. Nobody drew those conclusions, not making an excuse for him. He needs to be responsible for what he did. More importantly, the people around him that sit up and didn't do anything for years while knowing he was doing it should also be held accountable. We've got to stop the silent condemnation. We've got to stop the facilitation. We have to stop allowing people to harm our women and children. 
And women and children mean boys and girls, by the way. But we are going to have to talk about that skeleton. We are going to talk about, we're going to talk about the damage that it's done. We're going to talk about the lack of trust it's created. We're going to talk about the inability to sustain relationships, to facilitate relationships, to have healthy relationships that come out of that. A lot of the things that a bunch of black men want to complain about with black women comes from the fact that that black woman at some point in time was violated by a black man. And at the very minimum wasn't protected by the black man that should have protected her if he was there. We got to talk about that. We are going to have to have that conversation. We're going to have to stop pretending that nothing's wrong and it's everybody else's fault. Nothing's wrong with me. It's everybody else's fault. No, that's not true. That is definitely not true. It's not a situation where it's just somebody else's fault and that you have no culpability in it. We own, we got to own our shit, people. On the real, we have got to own it. We've got to get off of this pointing the fingers. The worst thing you can do in life is point the finger blame. Not because somebody didn't do something to you, but the moment you point the fing finger blame, you surrender your power and you become anchored to the person who hurt you. Do you realize that happens? I'm talking about on a, a psychological level. The moment that you sit up and you point the finger and say, he or she did this to me. They hurt me. They broke my heart. They did this. They owe me. What do they owe you? Because if they never give it to you, you never heal. It's a bunch of people walking around with leaky souls. What is that? That's the hole in their heart that somebody created when they did them bad. They did them dirty. They left them hanging. They, they did something that totally broke them down at an emotional level and then bounced. And what happened is... After the acknowledgement of what that person did, the person couldn't release it. They couldn't let it go. That person did it. That person did it. And then it, on, on the, in the grand scheme of thing, what will happen is you'll go from that person did it to anybody that looks like or uh, is in the same category with that person having the same attributes. And I'll tell you that I know there's a bunch of trifling black men out there, but I also know by being around men and holding us holding one another accountable. There are men out there who love their women that aren't controlling, that aren't by, I never controlled my wife. I never told her what she couldn't do or where she couldn't go. I wasn't her dad, I was her covering. I was her husband, I was, I was that person that wanted to make sure she was okay. Imperfect as I am, that's who I was, and that's what I. I didn't come along to manipulate and control. I came along to help heal and to bind. And I still, to a certain extent, hold that same regard. And there are men like me. There's a brother right now. I'm not going to call any names, but God really worked on his behalf. Right when he got hit with the "I don't want you," "I don't want to be married to you anymore" thing while he's really trying to be the provider, while he's really trying to do all this, and he's working with me, he's trying to do that. Right when he gets hit with this, the church is sending, the church that he belongs to is sending people over into Belize to deal with the, the wake of the hurricane and the damage it did to buy, provide relief. So he's over there, and he happens to have a daughter that's in Belize. So there's some healing going on with that situation. Um, and But he's, but that thing is going on so he's getting that part of his life healed and he'll have to deal with the failed marriage or whatever's going on but there are good men and a lot of times the good men are the ones that are getting the broken women that are hurting them and vice versa a lot of the bull crap that we're seeing from men that are how they're handling our women is because they are broken because they've got daddy issues, they've got mommy issues, they've got trust issues. The difference is they have the ability to be a lot more destructive in a physical sense with that aggression and that anger than the average woman does. So that's that's an explosive mechanism that we are going to have to address. When I talk about black men leading, I talk about 
uh, proper racial socialization, when I talk about emotional stability, when I talk about uh, facilitating uh, emotional maturation to where your men uh, mature emotionally and become emotionally intelligent, learning how to recognize emotions, manage emotions so that they can be leaders, so that they can be providers, so they can be protectors, so they can be priests in their home, so they can be the ones who speak power, love, and advancement in, in, in their homes. You got to prepare them for that. You can't take 1.2 million, one, no, 1.5 million men out of the community and expect the community to function as it always has or as it did before 40 years ago, 50 years ago. I mean, oh, shoot, man, it's longer than that. 60 years ago, when there were 75% of black children being born in a two parent households. We had issues. That was stuff going on. That was that was a real big creeping issues. Black men were creeping. They got that for massa. They passed it down. I'm not going to co-sign no bullshit. I'm gonna tell you like it is. Yes, you had a bunch of people, a bunch of women staying at home dealing with a bunch of stuff, and that is a perpetuation of the pain. Then there was the grand, the grand exodus from the home as the black man became the most unemployed and underemployed individual in the U.S. on purpose, by design. And that created another gap because at the same time that this dissension was being created, he was being commodified. In the commodification of the black man, it simply became the same bullshit argument I hear, I see on social media so much now. Can he pay all the bills? Well, he did pay all the bills at one point. He didn't even have to have a high school diploma to be able to pay all the bills. That were industrial jobs in his community where if he knew how to work with his hands, if he had uh, experience as an electrician or plumber or welder, anything like that, he can make money and, and support his family, be the sole provider in his home. But they deindustrialized in the city. That wasn't by accident. Accident. They took vocational training out of high school that prepared young boys to leave high school certified to earn a living and take care of a family. They took auto mechanics out of a school. They took wood shop out of school. They took electrical uh, uh, training out of school. They took plumbing out of school. Why? Because you're going to have to go out there. Then they started amping up college degrees. The problem is the black male with the bachelor's doesn't even earn as much as the white male with the high school diploma. These are really truly facts. All these things are going on and we don't understand them. So we act out. We, we do things. What I'm trying to get you to understand is we have a problem. That little thing that happens, that silent con condemnation, those babies that were not protected are now grown. And we are reaping the whirlwind of our failures. And the only way to change it is to go in and say, from this point on, it happens no longer. And it's gonna be a period of time where there's gonna to need to be healing and correction. It's gonna be a hard time because nobody wants to give an inch. Nobody wants to say, I'll take some responsibility. Everybody wants to say, they did it. Black men, it's the black woman's fault. Black women, it's the black man's fault. Well, let me tell you something, at the same time, that black men, uncles and cousins and brothers and fathers were in the homes molesting daughters. Mothers knew it was happening and didn't say anything. And in the instances where they did want to talk to somebody, they didn't go to the police, they went to pastor. And pastor told them, don't tell on him because if they do, they're going to arrest him and take him out the house. And then the fear of not having a provider in the house went, led to silent condemnation. We've got enough blame to go around. I can talk about this for a very long time. What we got to do and what I want my hurt sisters to understand is that while there's a natural inclination and an urge to make sure people know black men hurt you and that you don't trust black men, the only way you actually heal is to release them. I don't mean say they didn't do it. I mean, start working on you. 
start developing and strengthening you so that you become whole, so that you become healthy. Because as long as you have that, guess what? You have a vulnerability and a weakness that the exact men you hate are going to be the ones who target and prey on it. That's a point you get to where you start to see the beauty in yourself, where you start to see the, the awesomeness of who you are, where you start to discover and you start to rebuild and you start to heal. And as you heal, you start to rise up and square your shoulders. That's a certain way you move, certain way you carry yourself, carry yourself certain way you think of yourself, certain way where you understand the type of men that hurt me in the past can't even get close to me anymore. This isn't me blaming anybody. This is me telling you this is how life works. And I'm telling you this because if all you have is an experience of horrible black men, that's something not right because of good men out there. Either you're not in the right geographical location, you're not going to the right places, or you are sitting up without knowing it and it happens and putting yourself in harm's way. And yes, if you put yourself in the, in the path of the pre predator, they will prey on you. They're trash. You can't expect the predator to be anything but the predator. That's why as the prey, you have to put yourself in situations to keep yourself safe. And if that means staying out of relationships, oh, by all, with all beings, do it. But when I hear people say, I'm going to teach my daughters not to, not to get married, then here's the, here's the flip side of that. Marriage is one of the biggest wealth hacks you can have. When you decide that I'm not going to get married, you, you're deciding either I'm never going to have children. And at that point, you're starting to talk about the depletion of the family uh, lineage or the family line. Because if you don't have children, you, their children can't have children and you can't be a part of the progenity, the, uh, uh, the progenation of of uh, your family lineage. So then what happens? You start, to say, you, you start to see the family deplete. So there's a responsibility of saying, you know, I want to do this. Now, I'm not telling anybody that don't want kids to have kids because that's a horrible thing, too. What I'm saying is if you're saying I'm telling my daughters, then that means you had kids. What I'm telling you is having children and then telling them don't get married means that they're going to go out into the world thinking, all right, I'm not going to get married, but I'm going to have kids. Now you have this split household where to, even if the father is participating, he's splitting his money and his resources and his time between a minimum of two places. Can't be the same as if he was in one. Can't be the same as if everybody was in on the same plan, building together, working together, teaching values together. That energy in the home is different when he's not there. I don't care how often he comes by. If he's not there, if his presence isn't the anchor in the home, that's a problem. And then if the thing is, you can't see that in any man that you know where you can say, well, that's what it looks like. That's a problem. Because I'm telling you, I saw it modeled for me in my home. I had I didn't have my dad. He wasn't there. He wasn't the right model. But my great grandfather was second grade education, but he held it down. He didn't allow excuses. He didn't allow you to point fingers. He didn't allow you to blame anything. If you don't like it, change it. If that's a problem, find the solution. We don't complain, we don't whine, we fix. Complaining is a sign of weakness. And this isn't me attacking anybody. This is me saying, it's come out of that because you're strong. And, and, and here's another thing that I'm gonna touch on. I don't like the definition of strong black woman. What it has, what a woman has to do to me. A woman, is strong a black woman is strong in her nature she shouldn't have to be a single parent uh being the uh, provider being the disciplinarian being the nurturer being everything to because our black women shouldn't have to kill themselves for us to recognize their strength their strength is in their beauty their strength is in their resilience their strength is in their spirituality their strength is in their ability to carry our seed and birth our children and then nurture and teach them and bring them into a certain place to where we take over as the protectors and 
uh, especially the, the, the guides and the examples for our sons, but also the, the source of identity for our daughters. We've got to get out of that. Yes, I am going to be coming at you. We've got a responsibility and we're not standing on it. We're not living on it. Uh, we're sitting up and coasting through. We bounced out and we're sitting back from a comfortable uh, distance and judging the people we left behind. Enough of it. I want people on my channel who are about change. I want people on my channel who are about action. You know, I, again, I don't need my, 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 uh, my ego stroke. So that's why you never see the gadgets. That's why you never see the clickbait. That's why you never see the things that most people use to get their channel subscriptions up. I'm not beefing with a person just so I can say, okay, I'm going to start a beef with that person. They got 100,000 subscribers. I start a beef with them. I'm going to get some of that people. I'm going I'm to stir up a thing. What I'm doing is creating division within the ranks. I'm, I'm sitting up and I'm picking a fight with somebody that I really don't need to be fighting with. I need to be finding common ground with. We need to learn how to work together. We need to find a way to push this thing forward despite our differences instead of searching for them so that we can collide. Black women, I love you. For everything that you've been through, for every heartache that you've had, for every uh, time and situation where a, 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 a black man felt it to be acceptable to mishandle you, to mistreat you, to abuse you, I apologize. But it's time to build. It's time to come from underneath that. Uh, black men, uh, for those of you like me that didn't know your father, saw him very sparingly. For those of you whose mothers didn't know how to love you or care for you or teach you and hurt you, and it's developed a certain sense of feeling about black women. I stand with you and I'm ready to walk with you. I hold no judgment, but we've got to heal. For those of you black men who were molested and haven't told anybody yet, and for those of you who were brave enough to come out and share, I stand with you. But we've got to heal. To my sisters, finally, those of you who have been hurt as children and violated in the worst way, my heart is with you and I apologize. But we've got to heal. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to keep it coming because I'm telling you, this darkness is consuming us, and that's exactly what they want. So on that note, I'm out of here. If you believe in the work we're doing, no excuses. We need you to donate. We need to raise the money. We need to expand our efforts in touching the lives of young black males and young black females. We got a lot of black women who need to heal. Look in the description box, click the link, or give through the organization's cash app account. That information's in the box as well. On that note, I am out of here. I got to get in the cigar shop for this meeting. Not late yet, got five minutes, but I need to get in there and get situated. All right, look, I'm out of here, you guys. Have an unbelievable day. Thank you.